Hey everyone, how's it going? So I just wanted to start off by thanking everyone for the support the channel's been getting lately. That's two straight videos that we've gotten to 100,000 views in just two days. I'm gonna be honest, sometimes these challenges can be really frustrating and seeing how much you guys are enjoying it, it, it really helps motivate me to just keep making more and more videos. So I wanna thank you guys really a lot. But speaking of frustrating, Jigglypuff is going to be pretty annoying. And let's talk about why. The first thing, the thumbnail, yes. Jigglypuff, until level 9, only knows Sync. Now, honestly, it's not as big a deal as you might think. Because unlike Abra or, let's say, Magikarp, Jigglypuff is normal type as a struggle in Generation 1. So, it's not that big a deal. Plus, Sing actually is quite nice. I even win the first rival fight, if you can believe it, without an attacking move. Because even though it only hits 55% of the time, if I spam it every single turn, eventually it'll put the Pokemon to sleep. And the second thing we should talk about, which is also relevant to the first rival fight, is Jigglypuff's HP. Jigglypuff has a lot of that. And not much else. 45 attack, okay, but it is slow, and it is frail. That is abysmal. Like, those stats, other than HP are Magikarp level bad. Like, I didn't really fathom just how terrible of a Pokemon Jigglypuff is, because you see the average base stats don't look bad because that HP is so massive, but the fact of the matter is, while it does help, it would be nice to have, I don't know, even some defense, which is one of the least helpful stats, but speed, ugh, this is gonna be a problem. And so when we start to talk about Brock, yes, we obviously are going to need to get an attacking move, but that's not as big a deal as actually outspeeding and damaging his Pokemon. Now, in terms of outspeeding, Geodude's not a problem. Onyx will be a problem for the foreseeable future. I mean, Onyx has base 70 speed. It's at level 14. I'm going to level up a whole bunch. I still will not outspeed the Onyx. So, yeah, just keep that in mind for later. And of course, we have the whole standard issue of Jigglypuff being a normal Pokemon and Brock's Pokemon being Rock-type, and us only having normal moves. But you might think, well, you have Sing to put them to sleep, and you have Disable. Shouldn't that help you win? No. Both those moves don't help me win. I mean, they kinda do, but no, they don't really. And let's talk about why. Sing, as I mentioned, only hits 55% of the time. But in a previous video, and I cannot remember which one at the moment, I mentioned that Brock has five full heals per Pokemon. Now I'm gonna be honest, I'm not even sure why this is a thing, because the only Pokemon you could get at this point that could potentially status Brock is Weedle, and why would you be using Weedle? But either way, this is a thing. And so Sing is missing half the time, and when it does hit, yes, Brock wastes a turn, but he just wakes up instantly. So not very helpful. Disable can be very helpful. It can disable Tackle on the Geodude. That's great, right? Well, it can also disable Defense Curl, and it misses a bunch. And if either of those things happen, you've wasted a turn. And if you disable Defense Curl, great. Geodude is now attacking you every single turn. Thus, we're going to need a new strategy, and that strategy is obviously going to involve leveling up, but we're also going to use Defense Curl because, and say it with me, it has nothing to do with the badge boost glitch. Uh, we'll talk about the badge boost glitch a little bit because it is relevant and doesn't work very well for Jigglypuff, but that we'll talk about later. For now, it's important to know that we don't have any badges, so you can't use the badge boost glitch without badges. No, I legitimately want to raise my defense, and by doing so, I'm able to take advantage of my massive HP to just outlast the Geodude and the Onyx. Now, with the Onyx, when it uses Bide, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using Sing, and eventually Brock will run out of full heals. And that helps immensely because I'm not outspeeding the Onyx, so when it uses Bide, I'm always going to be taking back damage. However, there is a weird thing I noticed. Bide does not have increased or decreased priority, and yet, for whatever reason, even though I know Jigglypuff's speed is lower, I'm somehow able to outspeed Onyx. This only happens when it uses Bide, and I have no idea why that is. I'm not complaining, it helped me win. But you can see just how low my HP got in the successful battle. It was really very tedious, and yeah, I'm at level 19. However, 
I didn't spend nearly as much time as I did with Abra. How come? What, what's the deal? Well, this is another thing with Jigglypuff we need to talk about. It levels up really fast. I mean, in Generation 1, there are four different groupings of Pokemon that dictate how many experience points it takes to get them from level to level. It's because of this mechanic, in addition to the fact that I'm only doing a single playthrough, that you should be taking my tier list with a bit of a grain of salt, because Jigglypuff naturally will level up faster even if I did the same amount of battles. So that's something we need to keep in mind. It'll also make the game go a little bit faster for that reason, even though it may be more difficult. And more difficult it definitely is. Spoiler alert, Jigglypuff is not easy to use. And we will get some help by getting Mega Punch and Water Gun. Jigglypuff actually has an insanely great move pool. It can pretty much learn every useful TM you can think of. But with that base 25 special, it won't be doing a whole lot of damage. But let's talk about that a bit later. For now, let's talk about the Rival 2 battle. I'm going to be using Mega Punch and just look how much damage that critical hit Quick Attack did. Oh my goodness. I mean, it only took two Mega Punches. And no sand attack, which is good, but holy moly is Jigglypuff frail. Anyway, the rest of the battle isn't too bad. Rattata used Tail Whip, and I did outspeed the Bulbasaur, and single Mega Punch is all I needed, so that was kind of nice. But that quick attack critical hit, I get it was a critical hit, but holy moly. Just keep that in mind. And funny enough, I wanted to illustrate how ill-equipped Jigglypuff would be for more difficult opponents, so I decided to fight Misty way before I usually do. You can see I'm not even at full health when I take on Misty. I wasn't expecting to win this, and look how much damage Star U's Water Gun did. There's no way I'm gonna win. Mega Punch was nearly a one-hit KO. Water Gun again does about 15 damage, and next Mega Punch, I don't miss thankfully, down goes Star U. But Star Me with Bubble Beam, for sure, that's the end, right? Well, turn one, it goes for Water Gun, so that's not bad. Mega Punch is gonna be a three-hit KO. Turn two, it gets a critical hit. Okay, I just barely survive and I get off another Mega Punch. Good luck with the Mega Punches. Then it uses the next defend and I knock it out. Okay, I mean, that was pretty lucky. <laughs> Honestly, that laugh is genuine because you'd think with all the runs I'm doing, nothing would surprise me anymore, but still, stuff still happens in these runs that just make me kind of smile. And that's why I keep doing them. Honestly, every Pokemon is a bit of a different experience and you learn new things about the game. And I will learn that Jigglypuff isn't the most fun Pokemon to use for these, but for now, let's continue, go to Bill's house, get the SS ticket, go down to Vermilion City, and then battle rival number three. We have Body Slam, which is just like better Mega Punch that can paralyze, but we're still slow. This time I actually forgot to heal before, I meant to go in with full health, just for the record. So Pidgeotto's quick attack doesn't do too much damage, Body Slam is doing great damage, and then of course I get hit with a critical hit. Lovely. Body Slam knocks it out. Now we have Raticate. That can be kind of a problem. Hyper Fang basically took away half my remaining health, but Body Slam was a one-hit KO, so that's kind of nice. Now we have Kadabra. Please no confusion. Of course I get confusion, but unsurprisingly, Body Slam is once again a one-hit KO. And now I've pretty much lost... Oh, I survived the Vine Whip on 4 HP, and it's not a one-hit KO, and then it uses Growl. Okay. I mean, goodness, these battles should not have been first try victories, but they were. So, yay, I guess? I don't know. But, now that we've beaten Misty and rival number three, there is no reason to skip Lieutenant Surge, so let's go fight him right now. That's so rare, I usually battle him after I get Fly. Anyway, Lieutenant Surge makes the bold choice not to attack with Voltorb, and instead speeding up already one of the fastest pre-evolved Pokemon. Interesting. He does attack with Pikachu, but it's a Pikachu, so it doesn't do much damage. Raichu, however, doesn't use Thunderbolt, but he uses Thundershock and paralyzes me. Get off the Body Slam, but then Lieutenant Surge decides, boy, I might be a little slow, should use that X Speed. And yeah, well, that went well for him. And I think now we see why this is Lieutenant Surge and not Commander or Captain Surge. Honestly, I think he should be demoted to Ensign Surge after this defeat, but whatever. Enough with ranks, uh, let's talk about the strategy as we head to Celadon City. So, you see I have Bubble Beam, and I'm about to teach Thunderbolt. Now, Bubble Beam is useful because most rock Pokemon in the game, and there are some coming up, are also ground type. So it's four times super effective. That's going to be quite good against the Hikers. 
Thunderbolt helps at least immediately for Pokemon like Slowpoke, and will also help against, eventually, the rival's Gyarados, his Pidgeot. It's a good TM to have as well, but Bubble Beam, we're going to be deleting it very soon after we face Giovanni, because Giovanni does have two rock Pokemon, so let's skip all the way ahead and talk about Giovanni. He actually did defeat me several times. Now, I kept forgetting to save, and thus had to battle Giovanni a bunch of times. And because of that, I have quite a lot of experience, and Jigglypuff is awful in this battle. Of course, the Onix is a one-hit KO, and so is the Rhydon, but the Onix outspeeds, so it can hit you, which is bad. But the Kangaskhan just is absolutely brutal to deal with. In this battle, it used Rage, the best thing it can do, and it still came pretty close to knocking me out. If he uses Comet Punch, that can be devastating. So, for the first time ever, a Giovanni fight is difficult. I said I would make note when it happened, it happened. But, after we defeat Giovanni, that is it for Bubble Beam. We're gonna teach Psychic, and this is our moveset, pretty much for the rest of the game. I had other ideas, but no. The moveset of Body Slam as a powerful same type move, that's a physical attack, Thunderbolt for coverage against flying and water types, and then Psychic, which on the surface is only poison and fighting, but since almost every grass Pokemon and all the ghosts are also poison types, it pretty much offers pseudo coverage against them as well. So not a bad move set. And of course, you notice I still have Defense Curl. I haven't used it yet, but those of you who've been watching the series know exactly why I have it. Trust me, it's not nearly as helpful as you think. And I'm gonna get to that very soon, but for now we have a battle with rival number four, and it's not easy, but it also was very doable. However, notice as we speed through the first two Pokemon, Pidgeotto and Gyarados, how much damage they do. After that Hydro Pump, I'm already at half my HP. Less, goodness, and you notice I level up. That's something that will frequently happen in battles. Now, thankfully, the last three Pokemon, at least for now, are pushovers. Growlithe, is a one-hit KO, Kadabra used Disable, but it's only level 20, and Ivysaur, I outsped, and it used Growl. So I didn't take any further damage after that Hydro Pump, but it's not looking good against fully evolved Pokemon. But here's where the run got really difficult, and it's not Koga. We'll talk about him in a second. He was difficult, but literally the Pokemon Tower was really obnoxious because all the ghost Pokemon know Confuse Ray or Nightshade, and literally, Jigglypuff kept fainting. I think I had to reset six or seven times here. I was losing to the Team Rocket members, and that's never happened before. Now, I don't have time to show you all the ways I lost, and for sure, if I spent more time backtracking to the Pokemon Center or the healing spot, I could have avoided some of them, but I never do that. Every other Pokemon, even Pidgey, was better than Jigglypuff at this point. I just want you guys to fully comprehend. And I'm trying. I'm constantly trying to buy vitamins and speed this thing up with Carbos or give it calciums to make it special better. It doesn't help much. Jigglypuff is just so slow and frail that Ghastly from Channelers are an issue. Heck, Drowsy and Hypno are an issue, speaking of which. Let's fast forward a bit to Fuchsia City. And while the Drowsies and Hypno were difficult, I want to talk about Koga for a second because I outspeed the coughing, fine, two at KO, and then Muck outspeeds, and basically it's a one hit KO, but Muck outspeeds. Muck, a literal pile of goop, outsped me. I never get it. I've never been outsped by Muck before. Like, I'm not even doing minimum battles. Like I'm not battling every trainer I see because I'm trying to do this as fast as possible, but holy moly. All right, then let's go battle Erica. She's actually not that bad. Ice Beam would be better because of Tangela, but Tangela is not a problem anyway. And in all honesty, it's just better to use Body Slam because of that same type bonus and Jigglypuff's better attack. Now I outspeed the Victory Bell and it doesn't go for Razor Leaf, which would automatically critical hit. So that's nice. Two would KO. Tangela hits me with Constrict, which sucks because now I won't outspeed Vileplume. But as you're going to see, not a big deal. Again, a 2 at KO. Vileplume does go for Petal Dance, its best move. But 
even with my terrible special, my HP is high enough and my level is high enough that Vileplume does barely any damage. So a pretty easy victory against Erica. However, you can see I'm pretty over leveled for her, so that shouldn't be surprising. But I ended up battling her again anyway, not because I didn't like how this battle turned out, because there's a whole bunch of trainers here, some of whom give out a ton of money when you win, and I could use those to buy some vitamins and to gain stat experience. Just a good idea to battle them all. And of course, I battle Erica again. It goes okay, I mean, Victory Bell puts me to sleep and uses Rap, but I didn't have enough Body Slams and I ran out of Psychic because I had fought every other trainer. So I had to rely on Thunderbolt and it was close. It was really close, but I did still win. So it just goes to show you, even in the worst case scenario, with a long sleep, rap, and using Thunderbolt partially, I still managed to win. So good to know. But I'm not gaining that many levels, and Koga was so difficult. So what am I going to do? Well, I kind of realized that there was a strategy that I always use, and I wasn't using it for some odd reason, and that is the badge boost glitch. And, in case you're new, every time your stats are modified in Generation 1, the badge boost, which is normal and is supposed to increase each stat by 12.5% when you get a certain badge, so attack for Brock, and for Lieutenant Surge defense, which is weird, but whatever. So when I use Defense Curl, both my attack and my defense actually as well are being boosted an extra 12.5%, which is nice. However, after I defeat Muck, you see that I use Defense Curl again. Why is that? Well, when you level up, the glitch part of the badge boost glitch goes away, and so while all my stat increases from Defense Curl for the defense, which are supposed to happen, those stick around, those extra bit for attack and defense go away, and I'd like to have those, so I use the badge boost glitch again. Unfortunately, I don't have the badge for special. That would be Blaine, so it does make sense to be using Body Slam, even though these Pokemon have higher defense. Also, good point to note is that Coughing does have Smoke Screen, but otherwise it's a very easy Pokemon to set up against. But since my defense is so high, for the final Pokemon Weezing, I use Psychic, and it would have been a two-hit KO because I get the special drop, but I didn't see it. Sometimes I'm not really paying attention. That's already happened in one of my videos where I didn't even notice while editing. That's what happens when you're constantly thinking ahead to the next move. You're not in the present. But it's really not a big deal. Even though I'm poisoned, a self-destruct wouldn't have knocked me out unless it was a critical hit. But that didn't happen, and I was able to knock out the Weezing in three turns. And we've defeated Koga, which is huge because now the badge boost glitch will also apply to speed. And as you know, I don't have a lot of that. So being able to increase my speed with Jigglypuff is a super great thing. And with that in mind, let's go defeat everyone's favorite AI trainer, Rival Fival. Now, unlike Coughing, Pidgeot is a pretty terrible Pokemon to set up against because there are four more Pokemon and it knows Sand Attack. So I only set up three, which will allow me to outspeed Pidgeot which is nearly his fastest Pokemon, so it should be good enough. So I use Body Slam, it's a two-hit KO, and unfortunately I'm hit with the Sand Attack. That's bad, but I do not miss with the next Body Slam, that's one down. Now I need to use Thunderbolt and I misclick and it's Psychic. I was thinking of resetting, and I was even more willing to do so after I miss with Thunderbolt, but Gyarados helps me out by using a Leer. That also raises my stats, because they're modified, even a move like Leer, I know, crazy. And that's why I use it, by the way, because there's no way of avoiding the badge boost glitch. But I use Thunderbolt and knock out the Gyarados. Growlithe, easy one-hit KO with Body Slam. I do outspeed the Alakazam, but miss. It goes for Psybeam. It not only hits, but confuses me. Thankfully, I do not hit myself in confusion and hit with Body Slam, but we still have Venusaur. And hooray, I leveled up. That's awesome. So now I'm not out speeding anymore. It goes for Poison Powder. I snap out of Confusion and Body Slam's doing decent damage, but there's the critical hit Razor Leaf, which I was worried about. And it's gonna outspeed speed and knock me out next turn, unless it uses Leech Seed. I love Gen 1 AI. Gen 1 AI is just so great because it's so unpredictable and that just leads to so many outcomes you wouldn't expect. It's just truly fantastic and awful but I love it. And that's why these challenges are kind of fun because you never know what's gonna happen and we've defeated Rival Fievel in a battle I 100% should not have won. The Giovanni battle on the other hand was quite easy so I'm not really gonna talk about it. 
I didn't set up any defense curls. I used body slam except for the Rhyhorn where I used psychic. It was close because I didn't set up defense curls, but notice that even Nido Queen's terrible attacks are still doing decent damage. Although why your Nido Queen would know scratch and poison sting? I don't know. Giovanni's just really bad at Pokemon. Speaking of which, we're going to skip Sabrina and battle Blaine. Blaine is a lot easier. Not necessarily because his Pokemon are super easy. Rapidash and Arcanine can be scary, but with the badge boost glitch and the fact he leads off with the Growlithe, we can set up against the Growlithe and then do well theoretically against the last two Pokemon if we don't level up. Of course, we do level up at the Arcanine after doing so well, but we get Super Potion, Roar, and I get a Paralysis, so yeah. Great job, Blaine. Truly masterful Pokemon battling. But now we only have one gym leader that we can battle left, and that's Sabrina. And she's harder to set up against because Kadabra can do significant damage. However, as we've seen in previous runs, we can set up against Mr. Mime, so here's the strategy. I got hit with Psybeam, which was a critical hit, but Body Slam is obviously a one-hit KO. Now I can set up Defense Curls. Mr. Mime only has Confusion and can spam all sorts of non-damaging attacks. Barrier and Reflect aren't great, but I can deal with them. That being said, I don't want a chance getting confused, so after the third Defense Curl, I go for Body Slam. It's not a one-hit KO, but once again I get the Paralysis, so I'm able to knock out Mr. Mime. Thanks to those badge boosts, I outspeed Venomoth and hit it with Psychic. But once again, I level up, since I level up so quickly. Alakazam misses with Psy Wave. Body Slam's gonna be a two hit KO, but it does hit with Psy Beam. No problem, I still won. And these last two battles are great examples of how the badge boost glitch does not work for Jigglypuff. Because even if you're really careful with how your experience points are distributed, you're still probably gonna level up in the middle of major battles. It just doesn't take that many experience points for Jigglypuff to level up. And I'm used to using Pokemon in the medium slow and medium fast that just simply level up way slower around this point of the game when I'm using badge boost. So this is a constant problem moving forward and I need to have strategies that either rely on having better defense since that does carry over or that don't rely on stat boost whatsoever. And this happens yet again in the final Giovanni battle. So against the Rhyhorn, which can do basically nothing to me, I set up all six defense curls. This will allow me to outspeed even the Doug Trio and one hit KO everything with either Psychic or Body Slam. But I level up before I get to ride on and it becomes a four hit KO. Now, granted, ride on has a bit better stats and it's not super effective. But could you imagine if it actually knew attacking moves that weren't one hit KO moves and didn't affect me? It would be kind of scary. Thankfully, it's Giovanni, so that's not a thing, but going forward, it's going to be a thing. And so the battles are about to get a heck of a lot tougher in another minute, because Rival 6, or the penultimate rival, if you will, isn't that bad. I decided to set up six defense curls because again, why not? Pidgeot just uses physical attacks and this time doesn't have sand attack, so pretty safe to set up against. I use Thunderbolt against the Pidgeot, Psychic on the Rhyhorn, and then Thunderbolt again on the Gyarados. Then I level up again. Now, you might be wondering, why not just set up again against the Growlithe? That's because Defense Curl won't do anything anymore. I'm already at maximum defense. Your stats need to be modified for the badge boost glitch to work. So if I also had, let's say, Meditate, I could easily use that. That would actually be a heck of a lot more useful. But Defense Curl, Harden, whatever, would not do anything when I'm already at max defense. So perhaps I don't want to set up against the Pidgeot, but maybe I want to set up against the Growlithe for the final Pokemon. Growlithe is obviously not a problem. Alakazam doesn't attack me, which is pretty nice. It uses Reflect twice. Is it because they're scared of harming Jigglypuff? Like, I'm starting to believe that the other Pokemon think Jigglypuff is so cute and don't want to hurt it. Because Venusaur just spams Poison Powder. And I win. Okay. I mean, that's now a trend of a few battles where, 
literally the best case scenario for me happen. And that is going to continue right on into... <laughs> no, it won't. No, it won't. I'm not even going to make the joke. The luck runs out big time. I have never struggled, and I mean this. I have never struggled this badly at the Elite Four than I did with Jigglypuff. Because I knew it was possible to beat it not at like level 90, but holy moly, is every fight kind of a struggle? Well, one isn't, but every other fight. But by far the worst was Agatha. I started getting pretty consistent at Laura Lee and of course Bruno, but Agatha, it would be like one in every six. And I don't think unless I leveled up to like level 95, it was ever going to improve. So let's start off with the ice theme and talking about Laura Lee, and then we'll discuss why Agatha was so terrible. Now, for the record, I could beat both Laura Lee and Bruno consistently at level 58. So that just goes to show you how obnoxious Agatha was. The strategy is similar, it's just even more consistent. Use defense curl six times. Make sure your experience points are such that you won't level up in the middle, and because I'm at such a high level, it won't happen. Dugong really isn't that scary because it just knows Aurora Beam. Plus, it likes to use takedown, and then it'll use rest. So, not a concern. It also uses growl, which further will improve my stats, but it does lower my attack, and you'll see that come into play after I knock out Dugong, Cloyster, and Slowbro with Thunderbolt. I then have to face Jinx. If it didn't lower my attack, I could one-hit KO with Body Slam. It would probably be a two-hit KO with all the stat drops I've got, but Thunderbolt was almost a one-hit KO. I think one more Growl or whatever it would have been. Lapras is also a one-hit KO, and see, I level up at the end of the battle. That's kind of important because Lapras knows Confuse Ray and Blizzard. It can be very trolly, so I'd rather not have to deal with that. And so that's one member down. Next, we have Bruno. And while he was very frustrating in no damage gold and silver, in red and blue, without me controlling him, he's awful. You set up six defense curls, then you use Psychic. One, two, three, four, five. Five times. Ha ha ha. And that is one. One horrible Elite Four member. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. That's awful, but speaking of awful, Agatha is the worst. You are not going to outspeed the Gengar until, depending on your speed, 3 or 4 defense curl. It's also going to be a 3 hit KO, but Gengar knows Hypnosis, Nightshade, and Confuse Ray. All of which can ruin your day, especially Hypnosis. Plus, you have the Golbat that uses Haze, and eliminates not just the badge boost glitch, but the badge boost you're supposed to get. That also doesn't work the way it's supposed to. So, Agatha is just a nightmare. However, at level 75, instead of it taking three psychics, it only took two. And if Agatha doesn't play well, like uses Dream Eater, then you can get by the first Gengar very quickly. That is not the norm, however. Of course the successful battle is going to be that, but usually you're going to get Hypnosis, and unless I went up to like level, I think, 90, I wasn't outspeeding it, and there should be no need to get that high. Now, I can't set up against the Golbat either, and it uses Confuse Ray, of course. Psychic is only, again, a two-hit KO. Now, because I'm confused, I'm going to try and set up a defense curl here, and the reason for that is it'll lessen the damage I take back if I hit myself in confusion. Plus, it'll help me, of course. It uses Haze, which just makes the first defense curl a moot point, so that's great. However, I snap out of Confusion, I'm able to use two more, it goes for Supersonic and misses, and I'm able to knock it out after outspeeding, so that's very good. But I'm not going to outspeed the second Gengar, or maybe even the Haunter. No, definitely not going to outspeed the Haunter since I just leveled up. Now, this is risky, but Haunter is the best Pokemon to set up against because of its lower special, and the fact Hypnosis can miss. It goes for Nightshade, pretty good. I go for one Defense Curl, I outspeed, and go for a second Defense Curl, but she switches into Arbok, which is perfect, because that's not an attack. I will outspeed the Arbok, and it is a one-hit KO, but as she swaps back in the Haunter, Psychic is not a one-hit KO, and I'm worried about outspeeding the Gengar, so she misses with Hypnosis, I go for a Defense Curl, and she goes for Dream Eater, perfect. 
Psychic knocks it out. Now I outspeed the final Gengar. Get the special drop. It goes for Toxic. Best case scenario. And I cannot tell you how happy I am every time I defeat Agatha. It's rare. And you might be thinking, well, J-Rose, isn't the point of this to see when is realistically possible? Isn't resetting again and again kind of against the spirit? And the answer is it's hard to say, honestly. You know, like maybe I should have leveled up, but I just don't like leveling up past my problems. If I see a strategy can work and I'm just getting what I think is bad luck, I want to try and see if I can make it work. And Agatha is just so inherently luck-based. It's just so hard to sit there and be like, yeah, this isn't working. Well, of course not. I have a slower Pokemon and her Pokemon use these trolley moves, which 50% of the time are really bad and otherwise are nothing. So it was a tough call. Trust me, I didn't even like leveling up this much. I'm at level 74. I started at level 58. But Agatha wasn't the only problem. Lance could also be an issue. However, he hopefully won't be. I am going to replace Psychic with Blizzard. Psychic, you've been great, but Blizzard is 90% accuracy, does more damage, and, well, we have Dragon Pokemon. So, let's see how Lance went this time. He can actually go really badly. Now, I set up a defense curl, but not for badge boost glitch, literally for defense. I know, I know, it's so rare I do that, but just like with Brock, having a little bit extra defense really helps out here. Of course, Lance predicts that, I guess, and goes for Lear, which ordinarily would be great, but isn't amazing. However, I do have a little bit more speed due to the two modifications to my stats, so I'm able to outspeed the Gyarados and one-hit KO with Thunderbolt. I'm also able to outspeed both Dragonair and one-hit KO each of them with Blizzard. Aerodactyl, though, will still outspeed me. It goes for Supersonic, which was the worst-case scenario, other than a critical hit Hyper Beam, and it misses, so that's pretty good. Thunderbolt, thankfully, is a one-hit KO, but I level up. Now, I should be able to withstand anything from Dragonite other than a critical hit Hyper Beam, which would be close. Goes for Slam, no critical hit. Blizzard hits again. Of course, it's going to be a one-hit KO, and we have beaten Lance and only have one more battle remaining to become champion. This was not my first time battling the champion. I had some pretty terrible attempts, and... I learned something. You know what an easy way to avoid leveling up in the middle of this battle is? Save a rare candy and just level up before. So that's exactly what I do. And while being at a higher level has much more obvious benefits, a side benefit is I don't need to worry about leveling up even after the rare candy, which would have happened at a lower level. So that's enough for the preamble. Here is the final battle. I'm going to try and set up six defense curls, but Pidgeot can use Sky Attack, and if that critical hits, it's a one-hit KO. My previous attempt ended via Sky Attack critical hit. This time, I do get a Wing Attack critical hit, but otherwise, Pidgeot pretty much does nothing the entire time I set up, which is great. It even mirror moves my defense curls, which, good on you. Do what you need to do. I go for Thunderbolt, and that's one Pokemon down. Alakazam, I outspeed. I use Body Slam. That's two. Blizzard doesn't miss on the Rhydon. Another way I've lost. And that's three. I don't get everyone's favorite 1 in 256 chance to miss on Thunderbolt against the Gyarados. And that's four. But Body Slam does not one-hit KO the Arcanine. Thankfully, it goes for Ember. Even a critical hit is not going to one-hit KO, and a burn isn't that big a deal. Neither occur, and I just need to hit Venusaur with Blizzard and not get a critical hit Razor Leaf. Well, I never found out what move the rival was going for because I hit with Blizzard, and after three hours, I finally defeat the Elite Four with just a Jigglypuff. Holy moly, this is the longest I have spent in real time on any run. I don't think I've ever been just so frustrated. And it's weird because you'd think Jigglypuff has so many options, but you just cannot make up for the fact that it is so slow and frail. We have a lot of slow Pokemon, we have a lot of frail Pokemon, but the degree to which Jigglypuff is both is kind of unprecedented. Even Pokemon like Rattata 
and Zubat. I don't think are as bad in that regard at least. And the question becomes, where do we put this on the tier list? The numbers aren't that bad. Level 79, 733, that makes it look better than Squirtle, but it's not. I don't think it's even in the same tier as Squirtle. And I would rather put it in the same tier as Eevee in Paris, but I still feel it's a little better than that. So I did what any good tier list maker does and just made another tier. And honestly, this feels like the best fit. It struggled way too much to be a Geodude or Squirtle, but didn't struggle nearly as much as an Eevee or a Paris, or at least it didn't have as many impossibly tough battles and the degree to which they were impossible weren't as bad. As evidenced by the fact Paris is at a much lower level and yet still took two hours longer. So yes, this list is never gonna be purely scientific, but based on my single first time playthroughs of these now 13 runs, that's where I rank Jigglypuff. And that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. Take care.